Um, Ed Moore is here today, and Ed Moore is one of the entrepreneurs in residence at the Research Park and Enterprise Works Incubator. He helps out at IGB. You just heard from Gene Robinson and other places on campus to guide our entrepreneurs. We heard discussion of the, the need for that type of coaching and how it's important to have somebody who's, who's done it before, and he's done a great job. But I actually first met Ed Moore because he had a philanthropic idea. He grew up um, with a father and grandfather that had farmed and they had farmland, and they had used innovation in their farming practices. Um, a history of going to the University of Illinois probably helped with that as well. And when the family farm sold, Ed Moore had the good idea with his siblings that perhaps they could pay it forward to others that were thinking about innovation for the future. And so at the University of Illinois Research Park, we've had the real pleasure of giving out this award since 2016. And I just would like to name, and if any of them are here, feel free to stand or maybe wave your hand if you're here, if you're one of the past more winners, um, because there's been a great legacy. So the first award, um, some of the, the history of our award has included soil diagnostics, and one of their um, entrepreneurs that was in that would later go on to become part of EarthSense, which won the next award. I know we've got Angela Green Miller from Telltale here. Angela's in the back, she was our speaker on Monday. And um, Aspiring Universe, which is now Habitare, was then awarded, which is Caillou Guan's company, really fabulous, and actually doing some accountability around carbon credits. And Epivara, which came out of VetMed, which just won a phase two NSF uh, SBIR award. And maybe speaking of that, we're gonna be recognizing another new entrepreneurial company that just got phase two NSF funding. But first I'd like to welcome Ed up to the stage. And I think Laura's gonna help me with another big check that's going out today to our, to our winner. Um, Ed, before we announce our winner, do you wanna add any other comments on behalf of the Moore family and your gift? Well, you, you did a great job, um, but I guess just to add, uh, so yeah, my grandfather uh, was a University of Illinois graduate in the College of Agriculture, um, and that was in the early 1920s. And uh, he persuaded his father to purchase a farm, um, which he then, uh, my grandfather then started farming. And when he went to the farm, he, he was using, took um, things that he learned from the university, innovations that he learned from the university, and believe it or not, a um, hundred years ago, most many farmers were still farming with horses. And when he started farming, he uh, built this machine shed uh, and all of his neighbors said, are you crazy? What are you gonna do with all that space that you're building? Well, he, he said, well, I'm gonna fill it with, uh, with machines uh, and tractors and so on. And they said, you're crazy. Um, obviously we know how that all turned out. Um, but my earliest memory of uh, when I was, this was the early 1950s, was that they were, my dad and my grandfather were, were shelling corn in the field. Nobody did that. They, you know, it took ear, ears of corn and they put it in a bin and let it dry. But no, they had, had a, a, a combine that uh, would, uh, would, would uh, shell in the field and they, they made their own dryer because there weren't any commercial dryers that were available for farms at that point in time. Um, and so that was another innovation. I'm sure there were more that before that. Um, but then there was also a, a milking parlor when everybody was using stanchions, they had a milking parlor. And, it, and when I was in high school, I helped them uh, convert a building over for confinement um, hog, uh, a confinement hog set up. Uh, again, that was pretty novel for that that time, which was the mid 60s, 1960s. So it's just a whole series of innovations. And it seemed like when these funds were available, the natural thing to do was to create an endowment um, that helped uh, teams like you've heard Laura talk about some of the previous winners, I think all fabulous um, you know, opportunities and awards. And today's uh, winner is no exception to that uh, as well. So. We hope this continues and we continue to find new uh, ag uh, entrepreneur innovations companies who um, are uh, meritous of this, this award and continue to support and encourage uh, entrepreneurship um, at the University of Illinois for the benefit of uh, companies that want to help agriculture to be more uh, productive um, and provide uh, better food supplies for, for all of us. So um, it's, it's an honor to be able to participate in this and I appreciate 
the opportunity um, when Laura and uh, Jed Taylor and uh, I think it was Roger Vinoy suggested this as, uh, as a, a way to use this endowment um, along with the COZAD uh, program. Uh, I, I can't be more grateful than, uh, than what you've provided for that. So thank you. Thank you. Do you want to stand on this side? Sure. So without further ado, I'd first, of course, thank you to the Moore family. Thank you to Ed personally. But um, this year's winner is Frost Defense. And I'm going to welcome up to the stage Gabriel and Manfredo. I'll tell you a little bit about their business. I'm chuckling a little bit because we had the brand prize that went one year to a company turning corn into vodka, then they were turning corn into beer, and now we're talking wine. So fun subjects for us today. Frost Defense and Virotech is helping both uh, vineyards, and so those making wine, and those with, that are fruit producers, which we heard more about fruit and produce production as well, to have an environmentally friendly solution to uh, address frost that can happen and kill crops. And I'm sure they will tell you more about that. It is funded um, with SBIR funding, and they are working tirelessly, I'll say. I see them in the building all the time, and I always say my best check of who's going to do best is those that are working the hardest. And so they've been at it and just done a fabulous job, and I hope they tell you more about the work they're doing in places like um, on the West Coast in Washington and in Mendoza in Argentina and in Southern Illinois. So they're impacting different real farmers with their, with their new technology. So I will let Gabriel and Manfredo tell you about their company. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, thank you so much for this honor. Uh, we are thrilled to receive it and honored to receive it. So, um, as you say, I'm Manfredo Solfrica, I'm the president and founder of the Frost Defense and Biotech. And There we go. All right. So I'm, on, I'm Dr. Gabriel Burks, uh, Vice President and Head of Research and Development for Frost Defense and Biotech. So first, uh, let us uh, give us some perspective of what uh, does this Frost deal is. Uh, so as, 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 uh, as the uh, planet warms, that is really, we cannot think that uh, the frost risks increase. So this is a map that a group of scientists all over the world has been put it on frost risk in viticulture and fruticulture in general. So as you can see, uh, the, there is a scale, but most of the fruticulture, viticulture areas in the world, they are under extreme uh, frost uh, risk. Some of them, they already experienced this risk uh, many places in Europe and, uh, for example, in France, that they already declared a state of emergency. Uh, so, um, but this, uh, and this, what is happening is this already losses about um, $10 billion globally on just in uh, grape-related um, frosts. So you see that uh, some of the solutions that there are, you have... Uh, this uh, there was in France last spring with burners just to try to uh, counter this devastating frost. Uh, this is in uh, where you see this is a burners that it has been using in Mendoza to for frost. Also in California, uh, sometimes they are banned uh, frost, but they have to use water. And water they are in the a thousand worse uh, drought, uh, so they are very restricted. And all these things do not even sometimes protect. And, uh, and also the problem is that uh, trying to solve a problem, they, these solutions create more problems because they produce a lot of carbon. So. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of where we stepped in. So we traveled all around the country talking to farmers and listening to the, the problems that they have. And uh, these are two quotes that we got as we were doing our field research. And a lot of times, one of the themes was that we realized that farmers, in a way, feel very helpless when it comes to fighting against Mother Nature. Um, they have very few solutions for frost in general. And so as the quote on the left says, like they have some solutions to protect them from hail. But when it comes to frost, a lot of times, you know, they're powerless when it comes to fighting against it. And so that kind of became the crux and the driving motivation for the things that we try to do at Frost Defense. 
Our, our mission is really to give that power back to the farmers and empower these viticulturists and fruit growers through sustainable frost mitigation solutions. So at Frost Defense, we have developed this, uh, this uh, package, uh, this technology uh, that has two components. The first component is this uh, physical product that is able that we is, uh, uh, put on the grapes. And this is able to reduce uh, or delay bud break up to 14 days. But uh, it has been tried several times to do this, but uh, this product that has tried uh, before, they're inconsistent, they, has, uh, they, they, they do inhibitory on the metabolic pathway, so, but this is totally non-inhibitory, non-toxic, 100% biodegradable. But also the other factor is that uh, this product also maintain an increased cold hardiness, meaning this lower the killing point of the unbroken buds. Because when they come across, they are, uh, they don't broke, they said, oh, it's okay, but uh, they are still vulnerable. So they are the meristem, floral meristem, that they are more vulnerable to freeze that nobody see it. But at the end of the season, you will see uh, problems with less bunches, uh, so reduction in production. So the other uh, part is that um, because now it's possible to manage growth development and with some algorithms that we have developed, we can tell uh, growers, especially uh, with this uh, labor sh sort, uh, shortage uh, that previous speaker uh, comment, so they're trying to mechanize. So, uh, but they have just a little bit of time to do some practices uh, like a shoot removal. So with this, we will be able to increase this, uh, the window of opportunity to do labor, uh, mechanization labor, or even to look for people. So, and then the other is we can reduce, not only we can reduce 80% of early spring frost rest, but also we will reduce more than 50% of the carbon emission that are used to mitigate frost. So, I'm trying to get to go back. <laughs> go back. Yeah, just keep going forward. <laughs> are you going? Yeah, here we go. Perfect. And so, the, the complementary part of our technology to the spray that we apply to these vines is our predictive analytics uh, technology. And so, what you see here is supposed to be a video. It's not playing, so past it. So in essence, that map is our product where it's, you can see the bud break activity of a given crop um, in a field. And as you move through the different locations of a vineyard, the activity of the bud break prediction of that particular crop is going to change with the topography. There it is. So as you move through the vineyard, you're going to get different bud break activity and different probabilities for frost risk. And so by marrying these together, we can give farmers a more localized ideal about where different risks are going to happen in their farm. And so when they have different frost management solutions already, they can use information like this to localize where they deploy those resources. And so in the case where a lot of these frost mitigation solutions uh, make the problem worse as far as carbon emissions and, and burning these fossil fuels, if you know only my bottom sector of my field has the highest probability of frost risk, then you can localize and say, hey, I'm only going to use this resource there. And that gives us an opportunity to have a more efficient use of resources for the farmer in general. And so to solve this very complex problem, we have a very diverse team of experts. And you know, we want to thank them all here. And so there are many others uh, who aren't listed here. But we have a team of people who work on our encapsulation technology, another team who works on our decision support system, this analytics problem. Um, we have a lot of behind the scenes people who have experience in business and who've been helping us grow as entrepreneurs and leaders in the space, um, regulatory, and you name it. Um, everyone here has played a critical role in our development as a company. So, and also we cannot do it without the uh, help of uh, and our partners. So we have uh, uh, the key, our key partners are growers and wineries uh, in different parts of the United States and also abroad. Um, yeah. And, oh, go ahead. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, so those growers are uh, big thing. So right now we're actually in the middle of field trials. So we'll be flying out tomorrow to go to our vineyard here in Lost Draw and with the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension 
Um, all these partners are super critical because without them taking a risk on us, believing that our product could actually work, um, we wouldn't have the opportunity to prove to everyone that this product is, is going to be viable. So um, we have partners, like you said, in Southern Illinois, Eckerd's, uh, Red Wine Empire uh, Vineyard Management, Redwood is out in California, uh, Bodega Silencing, we work with them in Argentina, so we'll be there this summer. And then uh, Mercer and St. Michelle out in uh, Washington, and we'll go there later in the month as well. And so we have so, research partners as well. Yeah, and then we have to, our biggest supporter is the research part that we have received incredible support uh, in all aspects. Uh, and, uh, but uh, one of the most important that we receive is the encouragement, the, the everyday um, support, that this make a huge, huge uh, uh, impact because sometimes those th things are not going that where we think, but we always say, okay, Manfredo, let's go, let's do it. So it is incredible and we just thank you so much. Uh, and we have some, uh, uh, also in the academia, we have uh, uh, Texas A&M, Georgia Tech, uh, Washington State. So we have uh, um, great support and we thank you everyone. And like to end, to end our presentation today, we're just going to give you all a, a little overview, a little timeline of kind of the future of Frost Defense, where we are now, what we're looking forward to for the next couple of years. So um, now we are very excited but because we have been lucky to be selected to the eight companies that they are going to uh, be on the Latin American Insurance uh, Development for Agriculture. So they select this uh, company that they can have a, a big impact on the agriculture, uh, also having in mind the climate change. So we will be able to, we are gonna join this meeting and we are gonna present there. And so we are very excited for this opportunity. Also, we are actively engaged, engaging with the EPA for all our regulations. We are non-toxic, but we are also um, working on all this, um, labels and all the stuff that they are very important for our product in the future. Yeah, and we, and we recognized pretty early on about this uh, CO2 and, and different emissions that can be problematic for the environment. And because we have environmentally sustainable solutions, we thought it'd be a very synergistic uh, partnership to work with the International Wineries for Climate Change. So there's a, a consortium of wineries and growers who are dedicated to reducing the CO2 emissions over, over time. And so we're, we're engaging with them to hopefully integrate some of our solutions into, into farmer uh, processes to reduce that. And then as we end our NSF phase two SBR uh, grant, um, within that second year, we're gonna be engaging with investors more about our strategies for growth um, after we end that, end that program. And so uh, in general, just for that first round, we'll be looking for like a series A, three to five million. So if you, if you have that in your pockets and you wanna just give it to us, <laughs> feel free. So, um, but at this so, moment. Maybe. Yeah, and then uh, again, uh, thank you so much to the Edwin Moore family. We are really honored to receive this, and this recognition means a lot to us. Thank you so much. Big time. Thank you all.